And that which fell among thorns are they which, when they have heard, go forth and are choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. Brother Rainer, would you pray? The soil of our heart is through prayer and Bible study. And if you let that prayer and that Bible study go for a while, your heart becomes hard. And it takes work. It's not convenient to dig that out. It, it takes too much work. Way too much work. And so um, what really struck me in the scripture was the part where it says, They which fell among thorns are they, and that which fell among thorns are they which when they heard go forth and are choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. <coughs> to me it says no fruit to perfection. That means there was some fruit that was coming forth, but it wasn't perfected. It never was able to ripen. It was almost like that fruit budded a little bit and then some pests come and ate up. It wasn't taken care of. It wasn't able to come to perfection. James 1.22 says, But be ye doers of the word and and but be ye doers of the word and hearers, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. And Matthew eleven six says, And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. We're all guilty of hearing the word of God and saying, Yes, that's truth. I love it. And then we go out the doors and we forget what we heard. We all do it, every one of us. I remember doing this years ago when I started doing it again. God brought it to my mind because we are so busy and we are so forgetful. I put my hand on my head and say, God, let it burn in my mind. Don't ever let it go away. Let it be there. Because I don't want to just be a hearer. I want to be a doer because the word of God says, he that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him in his sin. There is more to sin than just going out and committing adultery. It's a sin when the word of God says to seek God's face daily and we don't do it. There's sins of omission. Because those sins of omission are going to get you in a backslidden state and you're not even going to know it until it's too late. And I'm not saying that because I don't know because I lived it. I let bitterness take my prayer and my Bible study and everything else away from me and I was backslidden before I ever knew it. And when I finally realized it, it was like, how did I get here? How did I get here? Sins of omission are very deadly. Very deadly. Luke 12, 16 through 21 says, And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thy knees, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that laid that treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. We get so busy keeping up with the Joneses. It's in the church too. It is. I see, I see um, some really nice furniture that I like. I scroll through Marketplace on Facebook. 
I remember looking at dinette stables when we first were getting ready to move because we needed one. And you know, you, you think, how did these people afford two fifty thousand dollar dinette sets? You know, I found one for two fifty. Da da da, and it's perfect. But the thing is, we do get caught up in oh, my table's not near as nice as yours, Sister Rainer. And then when people come over, it's like, I'm sorry, we just you know we don't have what what we should have. We get caught up in the cares and pleasures of life and and. And working overtime so that we can pay that six hundred dollar car payment. Because right. we've got to have a brand new vehicle, and it's got to be the top of the line with all the bells and whistles. And I like them, but my husband knows how to trade. <laughs> <laughs> and when I get tired of one, he gets me another. But we never spend extra money on it usually. So I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for a husband that's thrifty. But the thing is, we get caught up in it in church. We are so caught up with working. And, and this storm that went through, I, I thought over and over and over again, God bless us, we had power, I'm so thankful. But I really did think about, what is it that we have that we could really do without? We have all kinds of conveniences, and to us it's necessity. But really... Is it? The computers at work go down. We're lost. We're in trouble. We have become so entwined with the workings of this world that I'm afraid the church would have a major deal. How many churches do you think would have church without power like we did? They call in and say, we're not in the church, we don't have power. And I know we couldn't win that because we, it was dark. We couldn't use the light. But still... You know, we get so entwined in the things of this world. And I was talking to somebody today, and, and I was telling them, I said, the word of God says to come out from among them and be separate. And so many times we are just trying to race around, trying to fit in with the world and having what the world has and still say we're Christians. But the sad part about this is, we're losing our soul. And we're losing people that we care about. I was going through a list of the people that I know that are backslidden. Ones that are born to the Lord, and they want their families to the Lord, and they backslid and their families backslid. And uh, I was thinking, was I sleeping during that time? You know, used to an old Pentecost you hear where Sister So and So woke up at midnight and she had such a burden for somebody else. You don't hear that very often anymore, do you? You don't hear that very often. We need to ask God to help us to be awake. How many people tonight were while we are here in church that have been church in church? are in bars right now. They don't fit in the world, but they and because they've already had the Holy Ghost, they don't fit in the world anymore. But they don't feel like that they can come, come back to church because the devil's right there with condemnation. Right there with condemnation. And we're so busy going through our lives that they're they're trophies in hell. There are trophies. But the devil has stolen them because we're so caught up in the cares and the pleasures of life. And it's not convenient. When we choose to fast, I'm guilty. Oh, it worked this week. Let's see. I can't fast Wednesday because they're having dinner at, at work. And I can't fast Thursday because somebody said they were going to bring me some donuts. And I can't fast this day. So we schedule our fast day around our activities instead of allowing God to say, I want you to fast this day. We schedule our fast days. I remember when God used to deal with me. And, and it's not God's fault. We're getting ready to go there in a minute. Why is it that God don't deal with us anymore? He does. Sister Mary. Go ahead. Put that 
picture up. He deals with us. We just don't hear him. Because we don't communicate. We even come to the house of God and we may not have our phones out, which I know sometimes we do have to get our scriptures and things like that, but are we here when we're here? When we get on our faces before God to pray, are we there with God or are we not? Are our minds distracted? You've heard me talk about it before. I hate my phone. But I love my phone. It's a love-hate relationship. But it's true. The minute you pick up your phone, I'll pick up my phone to go read my Bible or my devotion, and there's a notification. Oh, what's that? And before I know it, two hours have passed, and I've not even touched my word. And I hate it. I hate it. And I had somebody tell me I was talking to them about it. They said, you know what I did finally? I just took the app totally off my phone. And if I want to see what's on pictures on Facebook or whatever, I have to go to the website. I have to go to the login and I have to do it. That way it's not in front of me. But we get distracted. We get distracted. How many of you have seen that, that video on Facebook of... Um, a three or four year old little girl was calling her mommy and crying and calling mommy, mommy, mommy and her mom's scrolling through the phone. It went on for like five minutes. And it was like the mom wasn't even hearing. And that's what I'm afraid that we are doing with God. We're not hearing him because we're so distracted. We're so preoccupied. And it's not convenient right now, God. I want to hit my snooze button and I want to sleep a little bit longer. It's not convenient for me to fast today, God, because I told so-and-so that I would cook dinner. That didn't happen in my house very often. Hush. I brought you food today. She didn't believe I cooked today, so I had to bring some food. But that's where we're at today. Is that not where we're at? Matthew 6, 26. You know, the word says, out of the mouths of two or three witnesses, let them be established. Three scriptures, Matthew 16, 26, Mark 8, 36, and Luke 9, 25. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Mark 8, 36, for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? And then Luke 9, 25, for what, for what is a man advantaged? What advantage do you have if he gain the whole world and lose himself and be a castaway? Paul said something to the effect that I don't want to be guilty. I don't, for, if what I have preached, I myself become guilty. And become a castaway. It would be sad to live this life under stone and get caught up in the cares and pleasures of life at the end of this race and be lost. When I started seeking God, when I first told God I wanted to live for Him, I said, I don't want to think I'm lost and I don't want to think I'm saved and be lost. I didn't want to just go through the motions. I didn't want just a halfway religion. I told him I wanted it all. I said, God, if you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. You parted the Red Sea. You raised the dead. You healed the blind. You did all these things. I want that. And somewhere along the line, I've lost that. I'm talking to me. Am I the only one? We've lost that desire to see the miracles, and that desire to see the miracles is what will drive you to fast and to pray and to listen to God. The only time we get down on our face to pray before God is to give Him our list as if He said it was. Or whine and cry and tell Him all the things that we're going through, which He wants to hear because He says, casting all your care. But then we don't sit there and listen. We get up and go about our day. And how can he direct our steps if we're not listening? 
And how can we hear if we're listening to something else? Revelation 3.14 through 22. Very familiar scripture. I read it in Sunday school Sunday. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write these things, say the amen and the faithful and true witness. The beginning of the creation of God, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold or hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have needed nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eyesight, that thou mayest see. I'm going to pause there and say, if you're lukewarm, you've been hot at one time. But it says, I counsel thee to buy. That means it costs something. We have to buy that gold that's been tried in the fire that we might be rich. But then it goes on to say, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh. Will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and sat down with my father in his throne? He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. We hear a lot of things, but we don't listen. We need to listen. We need to listen. The thing about this is, he says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. If we're rebuked in church, Brother Rainer, we're leaving and we're not coming back. We used to hear all the time, boy, that preacher stepped on my toes and I needed it. Now we hear, can you believe that preacher said that? Mm -hmm. How dare he? He doesn't know my life. He doesn't know what I go through. He does. Oh, this is what I hear a lot. How can you tell me what my relationship with God is? Yeah. Well, it's because you just said that. Yeah. I didn't know. <laughs> There's no love. I just saw you walk out of a bar, but I guess I can't tell you what your relationship is. Come on. Oh, God knows my heart. Yeah. And the way you act, a lot of people out do know your heart too, because the Bible says out of the heart, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking. Your mouth tells me what's in your heart. My mouth tells me what's in my heart. And sometimes I have to say, oh, God, help me. We're all flesh. We all lose our cool. We all get upset. Some more than others. <laughs> My husband was something like you. Mm -hmm. But it says, he that overcomes. I have started praying, God, I want to overcome. I want to overcome. I've started praying, God, help me to be willing to be willing. I want to do this. I don't want to just lay back on God. One time God spoke to me and said, just because you've gotten your miracle doesn't mean it's time to sit down. Because when you sit down, the enemy's going to come in and steal something else. But that's what we do. We sit down. And God says we can rest, but he also says to be vigilant, to be sober, because the devil, as a roaring lion, is seeking whom he may devour. Do you think he's going to let you sit down and do nothing? He's not. And while we're sleeping, I don't have my phone up here, but while we're looking at our phones, he's stealing our kids. He's stealing our family members. And he's also stealing our hearts. Sister Mary, what will convenience cost you? What will convenience cost you? 
Consecration with convenience will cost you your soul, the soul of your family members and friends, and each one that you encounter along the way. This is something God dealt with me about, and it scares me to death. There are only people that I can reach only. And once I've had the Holy Ghost, and once he's given me the keys like he did Peter, the people that I encounter that he has placed in my path to reach, if I don't reach them, if I don't at least attempt to reach them, and if I live a life that's contrary to what they should be seeing, if they see me being lazy about my relationship with God, which people in the world can see, I'm going to be accountable for that. We are going to be accountable for those people that God has put in our paths to reach when we don't reach them. And so it is going to cost a lot. Excuses won't stand before God. The enemy will justify everything for you so that you reject the word of God. He will. He'll give you a, a justification for everything you want to do. He'll whisper in your ear and say, oh, I don't need to hear that. Or, oh, I'm strong enough. I'm strong. I've had the Holy Ghost for 28 years, praise God. I'm not going to backslide. I know the truth. I can, I can partake in that, or I can do this, or I can do that. It's not going to affect me because I know it's not real. I know it's not true. But you feed your mind with that so many times. The Bible says if you don't have a love for truth, that God will send you strong delusion and you'll believe a lie. You'll think it's truth, but it's a lie. I guess you said it. God did. Because he tells us not to do that. Because what you feed your body is going to be on your body. And what you feed your mind and your heart is going to be in your mind and your heart. And I don't care if you've got the Holy Ghost. It's kind of like putting water on a fire and saying it's not going to go out. Is it not? It's kind of like putting dirt or poison in a cup of water and then drinking it and saying, oh, you're all right because it's got water in it. No. It's not all right. And that's where the church is today. We've been feeding ourselves too much on the world. We have. It used to be not acceptable to do a whole lot of things that the church is accepting now. Right. And that's why we don't see our miracles. That's why we deal with the things we deal with and we wouldn't have to today. I, I'm talking to me too. Please, no, I'm talking to me too. I wonder how many of my friends that are backslid tonight are backslid because I didn't find it convenient to pray for them. I didn't find it convenient to reach out to them. It was too much work. It was too much heartache because it hurt too much. Because it does hurt when you see somebody that you love that you wanted the Lord backslide. It doesn't hurt us nearly like it hurts God. And you know what? It's going to hurt them if they go to hell. Acts 24, 22 through 27 says, and this is talking about Felix and Paul. It says, and when Felix heard these things, having more perfect knowledge of that way, he deferred them and said, When Lysias, the chief captain, shall come down, I will know the uttermost of your matter. And he commanded his centurion to keep Paul and to let him have liberty, and that he should forbid none of his acquaintance to minister or come unto him. And after certain days, when Felix came with his wife Drusilla, which was a Jewess, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. And he, as he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix trembled. As Paul's preaching to him about Jesus Christ, Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. I think that's what happens sometimes when we come to church, we hear the word of God, and we say, yeah, that's, that's a good idea. And when, 
when I decide to go that way, I will. I got time. I got time. I'm only 10 years old. I'm only 16 years old. I got time. It says he hoped also that many should have been given him a palm that he might lose him. Wherefore, he sent for him the oftener and communed with him. How long? Two years, the Bible says. But after two years, Portius Festus came into Felix's room, and Felix, willing to show the Jew the pleasure, left Paul bound. For two years, he kept bringing Paul back. Kind of reminds me of Saul, King Saul, when the Spirit of God left him. Here's the danger. The Spirit of God left him, so what did he do? He called for David. To play. And while the Spirit of God was moving because of the worship of David, he felt that peace, he felt that release. And so he just continued on. He continued on. Do we come to the house of God and feel that presence of God? And then we go on about our way afterwards? There's a danger. In that. You know, sometimes people say, you need to set that person down for discipline, a pastor. We have that issue sometimes. But my opinion in setting somebody down is not for discipline. Especially somebody that's on a platform, because you feel the anointing the minute you step on a platform. But they need to be able to sit down and allow God to be able to deal with them and for them to respond instead of being on the platform and having to perform and feeling the anointing and thinking everything's okay. Because God's going to anoint the music. Did you know that you can be used in the gifts of the Spirit and your character not be right with God? If he can use a jackass, he'll use whatever he needs to use. We cannot go through the motions. We cannot just come and get a little feel good and go home and be not different, not be changed. We used to pray, God, let me come into this house and be changed. Let me be different when I leave. How many of us are different when we leave the house of God? Every time we come to the house of God. We got to pray. God, make us different. Change us today. The enemy will justify everything for you so that you reject the word of God, so that you will let up on your prayer life, so that you will let up on the reading of the word of God. He will. He'll, bomb. He'll give you all kinds of time to do other things. And I'm going to close, but the cares and the pleasures of life are going to choke out the things of God. There's other things that will choke out the things of God if you're offended. If you've been wounded and you don't have that taken care of, that'll send you to hell. And maybe it's not your fault that you were wounded, but if you don't take care of it, it'll send you to hell. If you listen to the wrong voices, have you ever been driving down the road and nobody's talking to you but a thought randomly comes to your mind? I've been in the house of God before. And an ungodly, horrible thought would go through my mind. Where do you think that come from? The devil. He plants thoughts in your head, but you think it's your thoughts. You've got to watch the voices you listen to. We get caught up in the things of this world in our lives. And one thing that I want to talk about real quick before I close is idols. We have idols in our lives. Oh, I don't have a golden calf. <laughs> Phones can become idols. Whatever you spend time doing, rather than doing the things that you need to be doing for God, is an idol. Like spending two hours on Facebook instead of reading the Word of God. If you haven't spent two hours reading the Word of God, why would you spend five hours watching Facebook? What's important to you? I've said it before, 
and it's true, and I have to tell myself this too. Whatever is important to you, you're going to do. And whatever you do, and whatever you push your time into, is going to show. There's nothing wrong with that kind of brain. There's nothing wrong with deer hunting or rabbit hunting or, or reading a funny book or whatever you like to do. Sewing. Sister Raymond likes to sew. Or Sister Stone loves to cook Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> but you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But when that consumes you, the Bible says that the Holy Ghost is like, fire, shut up in my bones. Is it fire in your bones anymore? Is it fire in our bones anymore? I'm just trying to stir us. We've got to wake up. We've got to put aside those things that make us want convenience. It's not easy if you've not worked out for years to start working out. But after you do it for a while, you become addicted. After you make it a habit to get in the Word of God and spend at least 30 minutes a day in prayer, pretty soon that 30 minutes easily turns into an hour. Honestly, pretty soon that hour easily turns into two hours. It's easy. But it's just getting started. And the only way we're going to get started is if we make it in our minds that we're going to get started and that whatever the Word of God says, we're going to be teachable. We're not going to be offended, even if it hurts. Let me ask this. Think of something right now in your mind that means more to you than anything else in the world. If God asked you to give it up, would you? Would you or would you try to bargain with it? That's good. Would you give it up? Even if it meant your spouse or your child, though none go with me, still I will follow. God asked Abraham to give his son. That song, Isaac, that song that Sister Starter sings, I will lay my Isaac down. God doesn't want our Isaac. He wants us. He wants all of us, not just a part of us. He wants us to be willing to do whatever it takes, no matter what. And I'm afraid if we hang on to things too much, he's going to end up taking it from us whether we want it or not, and it's not going to be in a good way. We need to surrender it. We need to give it to God. I, I wonder if somebody will come and play and if, if we can just have a few minutes, I am landing this plane, and I know I talked a little bit long, but please, make it in your heart tonight, not to seek God at your convenience, but to seek and to serve God and to be willing to lay down whatever it is that he wants us to lay down. In Jesus' name.